We described the common mechanisms of bacterial resistance to antibiotics and explained the mechanism of action and spectrum of activity of beta-lactams. Now, given a patient case, recommend effective drug therapy for the treatment of bacteremia. Now, blood is a sterile site. There is no such thing as colonization of the blood. So any organism in the blood is referred to as bloodstream infection. Now, bacteremia specifically means presence of bacteria in the blood, whereas fungemia means the presence of fungi in the blood, and viremia means presence of viruses in the blood. Because there are different types of fungi, and candida are the most common type of uh, fungi, there is also candidemia, which refers to the presence of candida species in the blood. Now, because blood is a sterile site, it always, the bacteremia is always the result of translocation of bacteria from somewhere else. So it's important to identify where the bacteria is coming from in the blood. This could include seeding of organism to a foreign object, such as intravascular catheter, as well as prosthetic devices. Infective endocarditis is a common source of bacteremia, and it is referred to an infection of the cardiac endothelium and can present as either acute or subacute disease. So when a patient has bacteremia and the source of the bacteremia is not clear, infective endocarditis must always be investigated, especially for gram-positive bacteria. Now, when should bacteremia be suspected? There is something referred to as the SERS criteria or the systemic inflammatory response syndrome. And that includes four criteria. And if the patient has at least two of these, bacteremia should be suspected. So that includes a fever, which is defined as a temperature of 38 degrees uh, centigrade or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or hypothermia. If someone uh, temperature is less than 36 degrees, as well as heart rate over 90 beats per minute, respiratory rate over 20, or PaCO2 less than 32, and lastly, white blood cell more than 12, or white blood cell less than 4. So the first one is leukocytosis, the second one is leukopenia. Alternatively, if the bands or segs are more than 10%, so these are the premature neutrophils. Bacteremia should also be suspected if a patient has sepsis, which will be discussed later in the course, or if the patient has hypotension or shock, presence of indwelling catheter. Other nonspecific factors include inflammatory markers such as C-reactive protein, ESR, or procalcitonin. Now remember, not all fevers are due to infection. So possible origins of fever include infection, malignancies, autoimmune conditions, deep vein thrombosis, or even drug-induced fever. So uh, drugs such as anticonvulsants, beta-lactams, minocycline, uh, allopurinol, heparin, captopril, nifedipine, and ibuprofen can also cause occasionally a fever. And of course, there could, uh, there could be a fever of unknown origin. Now, once bacteremia is suspected and blood cultures are ordered, when the results of blood cultures are positive, the question is, is the blood culture contaminated? This typically happens because organisms that live on the skin can enter into the sample. So common contaminants of blood culture include coagulase negative Staphylococcus aureus, Bacillus species, Macrococcus, Corynebacterium, and Cutibacterium. Now, these are some of the organisms that uh, exist in the environment that can find their ways on the skin and sometimes into the uh, sample. So it is important to get multiple blood samples from separate venipunctures in order to see if um, the organisms grow in all cultures. So if only one of the samples is growing one of these contaminants, it's safe to assume that it's a contaminant. Whereas if uh, multiple uh, cultures are growing, uh, for example, quag negative staph, it's less likely to be a contaminant and it's more likely to be a true infection. 
Now, these organisms should never be ruled out as a contaminant. So Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae, group A strep, gram negative bacteria, bacteroides, and candida. So even if one of several cultures is growing Staphylococcus aureus, for example, it should be treated as an infection because these organisms, uh, they, they kill patients, so therefore they should not uh, be taken lightly. With viridin uh, streptococci and enterococci, because they can be through pathogen or contaminant, uh, it should, they should really be judged based on the clinical presentation and severity of infection of the patient. Now, it is important to get blood cultures before antibiotics are started, if possible. In order to increase the yield of the blood cultures, it is important to have source identification, for example, for catheter-related uh, bloodstream infections. Symptoms are always helpful to identify the source of um, the bacteremia, for example, pain, uh, depending on what region of the body the pain is coming from, can be a clue to where uh, the bacteria found their way into the blood. Inflammation of a certain location can, can be helpful. Microbiological cultures of the site. So for example, if somebody has a UTI, so the, if the urine culture is growing the same thing as the in the blood, uh, it could be the source. Or if someone has pneumonia and a respiratory uh, sputum culture is growing the same organism as the blood, that could be the source of bacteremia. As well as imaging. So if um, you know no organism is identified in other places, imaging might be able to show where uh, the organism could be originating from. And the reason source identification is important is because source control is crucial. So removing the source is optimal and uh, sometimes surgical debridement uh, might be needed. Now for the empiric treatment of bacteremia, it is important to start treatment early in order to uh, decrease the rate of mortality. And the choices of antibiotics really depend on the source, if known, and also on the history of the patient. So, for example, if the patient has a history of multi-drug resistant organism, then uh, broader antibiotics are needed empirically. And of course, tools such as uh, gram stain, as well as rapid diagnostic tests, uh, are available to optimize the empiric therapy as soon as possible. Now, initially, empiric, uh, empiric treatment should be uh, intravenous because the source of uh, because the infection is in the blood, and IV antibiotics uh, give the antibiotic 100% into the site of infection. Now, there are some antibiotics that do not achieve enough concentration in the blood and should be avoided, regardless of whether oral or IV. So natrofurantoin does not achieve enough concentration. It goes uh, straight into the urine. Cholestin, which is an IV antibiotic, does not achieve enough concentration in the blood, goes straight into the urine, as well as tetracycline. So tetracyclines, especially tigacycline, have very large volume of distribution. So they basically achieve high concentrations in most tissue in the body, but very little stays in the blood, so they are not ideal for bacteremia. In fact, there is a black box warning for tigacycline for increased risk of mortality as a result. And rapid diagnostic tests, uh, such as multiplex PCR, uh, are able to identify or select organisms as well as resistance early on. Uh, so within 24 hours of infection, uh, these results can be available, which are often used uh, in the sense that if one of these genes show up, then if the empiric treatment is not covering that specific resistant organism, then the treatment can be escalated. 